This family of switch mode converters uses a coil at the center of the action. They all operate on a similar principle, however it's the placement of the output stage that determines whether it steps down the supply voltage or steps it up. The buck converter is a more efficient way to step down the supply voltage than by using resistive drop method. The transistor turns on. Current begins to flow. How fast it ramps up is governed by the coil's time constant. The flux field stores energy. The transistor shuts off. The flux field collapses. The coil propels current briefly to help maintain power to the load and filter capacitor. If the transistor were left on indefinitely, eventually the current will reach a maximum when the coil is offering only DC resistance. However, it is not the most efficient use of the coil if we allow current to stay at maximum. These switch mode converters are able to use small coils and small capacitors, which can be operated at very high frequencies. Hence, they are more economical, cooler running, and more efficient, all of which makes them very popular. The boost converter is a step-up converter because whatever comes through the coil automatically has the supply voltage added to it. This layout shows how current takes two paths through the coil, first through the transistor and secondly through the output stage. The transistor turns on Current begins to flow, slowly at first, then ramping up. The transistor shuts off. The flux field starts collapsing. Attempting to maintain current flow, the coil produces however great electromotive force is necessary to overcome the volt level on the capacitor. The result is a stepped-up charge on the capacitor. It's common to have a duty cycle of 70 or 80 or 90 percent during which time the transistor is on. The coil takes that long to charge, but a comparatively short time to discharge. Typically, things are adjusted so that coil current swings 40 percent above and 40 percent below a desired average current. The buck boost converter can provide a negative supply voltage or can provide higher than the supply voltage depending on where you connect the leads for power output. In this layout, just to make things easy, we reference the output stage to the supply ground. Notice that the capacitor develops a negative voltage. Here the output stage is placed across the coil, hence the supply voltage is not added to current going through the coil as it was added in the boost converter. As before, the meter needle tells the story. The transistor turns on, coil current ramps up, the transistor shuts off, the coil propels current around the output stage. Here it looks as though the coil is pulling current around the output stage instead of pushing current and a negative charge develops even though the supply is positive polarity. The control circuitry is summed up by the control pulses coming from the left. The control circuitry would have adjustable frequency and duty cycle, perhaps also voltage regulation or current regulation. This buck converter configuration is included as a curiosity 
and in the process to demonstrate it can be made this way. For the sake of illustration, here's how to drop mains AC down to a lower value DC. It operates on 60 cycles and uses massive components, so it's not the most efficient way to do this. It would be more efficient to rectify the mains AC and process it through a high frequency converter. Alert high voltage hazard. Rather than have high current flowing in and out of one capacitor, a bank of capacitors is shown here. There is an LC series loop here and it may show a tendency to generate ringing oscillations.